After the American Civil War, General William Sherman famously stated, War is hell. But he could hardly have predicted the hellish conditions that soldiers would have to endure during the industrialized world wars. Many atrocities were committed during these wars, but the war crimes committed by the Axis powers are considered to be some of the most systematically callous acts in modern history. In this video, we will detail the horrific events of the Bataan Death March. The Second World War broke out on September 1, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. At that time, the Japanese were already involved in the Second Sino-Japanese War, as they aimed to expand the Japanese Empire across the Asia-Pacific. Due to these ambitions, Japan was already competing with the two powerful Pacific empires of America and Britain, which aligned the machinations of the Japanese imperialists to those of Nazi Germany. Both had opposing views on racial supremacy, with the Japanese asserting they should be the ones to lead Asia against the white Europeans, and the Nazis promoting Aryanism. But despite their obvious differences, they both believed the other could help them achieve their individual goals. When World War II broke out, America was reluctant to join the Allied forces, as they believed the dispute to be between foreign nations and had no good reason to be directly involved. However, they did supply the Allies with substantial military equipment in September 1940 onward. But when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor in 1941, America was drawn into the fray. Japan had intended the attack to be a preventative measure, and its aim was to stop the U.S. fleet from entering the Pacific Theater. Japan wanted to strike while the iron was hot, and within hours of the Pearl Harbor attack, the Japanese started bombing military targets in the Philippines. The Japanese wanted the Philippines to be a resupply point for their operations in the Southern Pacific. America immediately reacted, and General Douglas MacArthur announced that he had a force of 130,000 troops ready to repel the Japanese. The problem was, MacArthur's claim was a bluff, and one that the Japanese immediately called him on. When the Japanese landed on the beaches of the Philippines in early 1942, they quickly overcame the defenders, forcing MacArthur to withdraw the troops to a jungle fort in the Bataan Peninsula. The Battle of Bataan lasted for three months, from January 7 to April 9, 1942. Despite dire conditions, the Allies managed to hold out against the Japanese, proving that the Imperial Japanese Army was not the invincible and unstoppable force that many believed them to be. Despite the battle ultimately ending in defeat for the Allies, the mere fact that they had held out for so long proved to be a victory in Allied propaganda. The problem was, the troops on the ground in the Philippines were wholly unprepared for the invasion. The United States had been occupying the Philippines since the Spanish-American War. The war had put a stop to Spain's colonial possession of the Philippines, and many Filipinos had fought alongside the U.S. in the mistaken belief that they would be granted independence once the war was over. However, as part of the settlement of the war, the U.S. bought the Philippines from the Spanish, and it became an American colonial outpost. While some Filipinos continued to push for independence, others saw themselves as part of the United States rather than a colonial possession, and joined the U.S. Army in order to defend the Philippines from ongoing threats in the Pacific. Because of this, U.S. troops were already in the Philippines when Pearl Harbor was attacked. But far from the 130,000-strong elite fighting force, the troops on the ground were made up of around 22,000 U.S. garrison soldiers with no combat experience, tens of thousands of ill-equipped Filipino Army reserves, a small group of pilots without planes, and any sailors that happened to be in port when the Japanese bombed Manila. These unprepared and ill-equipped troops were quickly overcome by the invading Japanese and forced back until they had no other choice but to retreat. To further add to the defenders' problems, MacArthur planned the withdrawal poorly, leaving much-needed supplies and ammunition behind. The men were on half rations from the moment the Battle of Bataan began, but they believed that naval support from the U.S. would enable them to defeat the Japanese and push them back to the Japanese islands. In the jungle fort, many came down with diseases such as malaria and dengue fever. They had no air cover and were forced to eat monkey meat along with a few grains of rice in order to survive. Still, they held off the attackers for 99 days, severely damaging the Japanese ego, for which they would pay dearly in the coming days. Due to the attack on Pearl Harbor, there were no ships capable of delivering the much-needed reinforcements to Bataan, 
The Japanese blockaded Bataan and the nearby island of Corregidor, which prevented food and supplies from reaching the entrenched Allied troops. Although the soldiers successfully fought off the Japanese without supplies, it was only a matter of time before they could hold out no longer. On April 9th, General Edward King surrendered to the Japanese. It remains the largest American force in history to surrender, with around 76,000 Filipino and American troops volunteering themselves into the custody of the Japanese. Those who refused to surrender fled into the jungle, including several Filipino scouts who joined the guerrilla movement and continued to harass the Japanese forces. To the Japanese, surrender was the most shameful thing you could do. They had been trained that it was better to die than to suffer the humiliation of surrender and that doing so would bring disgrace to one's family and nation. From this point on, the prisoners would not be people in the eyes of the Japanese soldiers, and they were treated as chattel, good for nothing more than forced labor. As soon as word of King's surrender got out, Allied troops began turning themselves in. The Japanese, who had not prepared for surrender on such a large scale, suddenly had tens of thousands of men they were ill-equipped to deal with. They did not have the supplies or inclination to treat the prisoners in accordance with the conditions laid out in the 1927 Geneva Convention, and soon the suffering of the starving and sick men increased exponentially. On April 10, 1942, the Japanese gathered 78,000 prisoners, made up of 12,000 U.S. and 66,000 Filipino troops. The men were forced to march to a railhead at San Fernando, around 66 miles away. Along the way, the prisoners were continuously brutalized. The Japanese soldiers made a sport of torturing the imprisoned men. They beat them with rifle butts, dragged them behind trucks by rope tied around the men's necks, and made them sit in the sweltering sun without shade. They were beaten and poked with bayonets, and any that were too sick or tired to keep the pace were shot, beheaded, or bayoneted. Many of the prisoners were already suffering from malaria and starvation, and struggled to continue in the tropical heat with little water and food. The Japanese even tipped the water out of the prisoners' canteens, and if anyone were so desperately thirsty that they broke ranks to drink from puddles, they would be shot or stabbed. To add to the torture of dehydration, the men were forced to stop in front of wells where there would be refused water. Any who could not get up in the morning were buried alive or beaten to death and the stronger prisoners were forced to dig and fill mass graves along the way. Many who survived later recounted the horrors of the Bataan Death March. Captain William Dias recalled that their ferocity grew as we marched. They were no longer content with mauling stragglers or pricking them with bayonet points. The thrusts were intended to kill. Another U.S. prisoner described how easy it was to incur the wrath of the Japanese soldiers. One of the POWs had a ring on and the Japanese guard attempted to get the ring off. He couldn't get it off, and he took a machete and cut the man's wrist off. And when he did that, of course, the man was bleeding profusely. When I looked back, I saw a Japanese guard sticking a bayonet through his stomach. Survivor Irvin Scott witnessed tanks and trucks being driven over his comrades and having to walk over men who were a few inches thick. Once they reached the San Fernando railhead, over 100 men at a time were jammed into rail cars that were only meant to accommodate 40 people. The heat of the day, along with the combined body heat of the men, turned the cars into ovens, and many men died standing up because there simply wasn't room for them to fall down. Those who survived the journey were marched several more miles before reaching Camp O'Donnell, where the Filipino and American soldiers were separated into different camps across the road from one another. Survivor Irvin Scott still remembers the horrendous conditions of the camp. I was one of only three men in the whole barracks who was able to work, and I worked all day digging graves. We dug a continuous grave and carried men and put them in. We could dig them only about three feet deep. Usually, I wouldn't get three hours of sleep. You couldn't imagine the horror of the place. Still, amongst the chaotic horror, there were some acts of kindness. Scott recalls a Japanese soldier risking his life to sneak food and medicine to the captured men. This Japanese guard came walking across the rocks. All the prisoners were laying out on the rocks, dying or barely able to move, with malaria and dysentery. As the guard passed by, he dropped a banana leaf. He kept walking and didn't say anything. In it was rice with some other stuff. Sometimes there would be a banana in there. 
In an effort to keep up morale and because they feared Japanese forces would take out any bad press on their captives, the American government kept the details of the Bataan Death March secret for many years. In 1944, Franklin Roosevelt released details of the march in order to stir up feelings of anger that would keep the Americans motivated through the final stages of the war. The feelings of anger towards the Japanese due to the Bataan Death March and other atrocities carried out by the Japanese Imperial Army directly contributed to the justification of using nuclear bombs on Japan. Around 500 Americans and 2,500 Filipinos died during the Bataan Death March, and a further 1,500 Americans and 26,000 Filipinos died of starvation and disease in Camp O'Donnell. The estimated death rate of the atrocity was more than 30 percent, ten times higher than any other prisoner of war camp in World War II. In the years after the war ended, the men who survived formed an organization called the American Defenders of Bataan and Corregidor to try and gain reparations from Japan and recognition from the American government. It wasn't until the 1980s that the U.S. government officially recognized the sacrifice and suffering of the Bataan veterans. They were awarded the Bronze Star and were eventually classified as 100% disabled for government pensions. In 2009, the Japanese ambassador to the U.S. officially apologized on behalf of the Japanese government to those who suffered in the Bataan Death March. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Philippines, check out our book, History of the Philippines, a captivating guide to Philippine history. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.